Hello everybody and welcome back to the next adventure on 539 Productions. So today we are at the Francis Slocum Memorial Graveyard in Indiana and a really interesting bit of history here. Francis Slocum had an amazing incredible life uh, one of the most unique stories in American history so we're gonna walk around here and film some of this amazing little graveyard and talk about the history of Francis Slocum When Frances Slocum was five years old, she was abducted by three Delaware warriors on her family farm in Pennsylvania, then brought to the Midwest where she was raised by members of the tribe. Sometime around 1800, Frances married a soon-to-be Miami chief known as Shapokana. As a new member of the Miami tribe, she took on the name Maconaqua and eventually moved to the Missinawa area where she passed away in 1847. It was not until 1835 that her identity was discovered, leading to a reunion with her family almost 60 years after her abduction. And this here is the grave of Francis Slocum. And on it, it tells some of the story of what happened to her during her lifetime here in the United States. And early in her childhood, she was kidnapped by Native Americans and then brought here over the course of her life to Indiana and adopted by another Native American family. I'm not sure why this little angel has fallen. We'll place that right back down there. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing all that right, so feel free to correct me in the uh, comments below. I'm not sure what other sort of burials occur here, whether they are all Native American um, or not. Some of them are not even marked with names, but so far everything appears a traditional English style name other than uh, Frances Slocum and her uh, husband. And a lot of people appear to have missing dates. This one has a date of uh, death, however no date of birth, and then this one here is the exact same way. And some of them don't even have names and are only associated with the number here at the bottom, which this would have been number nine. Okay, and this definitely here would have been a Native American, you can tell by the name. It was a very recent burial within the last decade. So this is definitely uh, plots that maybe were reserved for family members of uh, Native Americans. Not gonna be able to stay too long here. It's getting dark very, very quickly. And there's no actual signs on this uh, graveyard saying I have to leave when it's dark. However, I think if the DNR see me in here, they'll probably ask me to leave. And these few graves here seem to have the last name Bundy from the uh, mid 1800s. This person would have been born right around the time of the Civil War. This here appears to be in the shape of an old arrowhead. 
and there's some sort of wooden device on the top. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm not going to touch it. It almost looks like a replica of a sword, maybe. But I'm not sure how likely it is. An absolutely amazing marker. And it looks like there used to be a plaque over here, but it's been removed for some reason. Hopefully that's so that it can be cleaned or something and that it has not been stolen. And you can see the elaborate coloring and uh, carving on this side. It's absolutely incredible. I love this. And then there's a little uh, dream catcher right here. You can see a very similar little angel over here. And it appears somebody's put a little candle light that may have uh, used to light up. And here's another arrowhead shaped grave, a little bit different from the first one. And here is the traditional Native American name, and it appears to be the translation of it below, which is really cool. And very interestingly, it doesn't seem to have any dates on this uh, temporary marker at the bottom, but it does have them right here. And although this is an amazing looking marker, it actually does appear to be a homemade stone that was done by a family member and not a professional service. And they've done an amazing job of embedding these photos here. What an incredible memorial. And over here, this is sort of strange, I don't know, it looks like it's definitely been tended to recently. But just a little uh, flower arrangement that's been placed over this uh, little metal marker here. So there's definitely a gate open in the back that leads, if you were to continue walking this way, you would lead right into the reservoir that I just filmed the recent Ghost Town episode at. A little bit flooded and in need of a second part but a very interesting place. So thank you all for watching this recent episode on 539 Productions. I hope you'll all take the chance to check out this amazing historical figure on your own, and I will see you all in the next adventure. Bye, everybody.